For the last couple of weeks, I've talked about the Mariners winning games that they felt like they were built to win. This was a rare case where they won a game that doesn't feel like the way they were built to win a game, but it is a win nonetheless um, and a nice start to this long road trip. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post-game recap. Mariners take care of the Angels tonight. Well, it's been a while since we've been able to say that. Take care of the Angels. 9-5, to five, they improved to 69-66 and 66 on the season. Before I go any further, do me a favor. Uh, smash that like button. You guys know how much that helps out. Thank you guys and gals for doing that. Comment your thoughts on the team and the game down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you to everybody that's gotten me over 4,100 subs. As you can see, the room is done. I've got the new background all up and ready to go for you. Um, obviously got a little something going on back here. Uh, Labor Day weekend. So, you know, things are changing and in, uh, in different spots. But um, let's see. We got a dog back there. We've or back there. We've got a planner. Um, we've got a hat, we've got some slogans on the wall there. So it's a very busy background today. Um, after this weekend, I should be back up in my, uh, normal dwellings. So, uh, forgive me for any, um, loud or not loud, but, um, distracting background stuff there, but hopefully most of you are just listening to this anyways and not really watching, but yeah, you know, listen, um, Houston wins today as well. So does Minnesota. So the Maris stay four back in the AL West, four and a half back in the wild card. One thing I've said, and it's going to be a broken record, but I'll continue to repeat it. I, I would certainly, if the Mariners don't get in, which would be a major disappointment with the way the season started and the 10-game lead, I would certainly much rather have them go down with the Mariners going 5-2 and two over a seven-game stretch and Houston also going 5-2, and two, as opposed to Houston going 2-5 and five and the Mariners going 2-5. and five. The team is playing better ball. It's played better ball under Dan Wilson. Um, a nice homestand. They start out this road trip uh, on a good note as well. So, you know, you know, it'd be nice to gain more ground. It'd be nice that the Royals could have won yesterday. They almost came back today and won, but you can't control what you can't control. Uh, the Mariners don't get in. They have nobody to blame but themselves. You know, they had the 10-game lead, but it is good to see the team just playing better ball uh, overall. Mariners sir made a good point to me. We were talking, if the Astros do sweep Kansas City um, and the Mariners can sweep the Angels, you are three and a half back of Kansas City as well. So you'd be four back of um, Houston, but three and a half back of Kansas City for the wild card. So, I mean... It, there is a scenario there where it wouldn't be the worst outcome possible. Um, and I think the Royals do have a pretty tough schedule. So if you can find a way to beat the angels here, the next two, um, it, it may actually not be the worst outcome ever. I'm, I'm still going to be rooting for the Royals, but um, just throwing it out there, you know, every Avenue you can get um, and have to get closer is a good thing for this team. So, um, you know, let's start with the pitching here. Let's break this game down tonight. George Kirby, not very good. Uh, five and two thirds, five hits, five runs, all earned, one walk, two Ks, gave up three home runs, only two strikeouts, had a walk. Also, I think hit maybe two batters, hit one, hit one batter. So essentially two walks, two strikeouts for Kirby, um, gave up three long balls. Moniak and Drury go back to back. Um, Moniak's a guy the Mariners just haven't gotten out at all this season. Drury's been atrocious this year. He gives up, he goes deep. Uh, Taylor Ward's a decent hitter, so not the end of the world, but just from the gate, from out of the gate, Kirby was not strong. You know, it's funny, all season I've been saying, like, can we point to one game where the Mariners' offense has bailed out a starting pitcher? Remember how many times I would say that and how it's never happened? Well, today it, it happened. The Mariners' offense kind of bails out George Kirby. Um, I want to say bailed him out because they started out up 5 uh, but today it was the offense that, that gets a pitcher the win, and you know, obviously we don't need any more evidence that wins and losses shouldn't matter for pitchers. We've seen the Mariners pitchers throw seven innings of one run ball and not get wins, but George Kirby gives up five over five and two thirds and does get a win. Um, you know, all kind of humor aside with it, not a good August for George Kirby either. He was not very sharp against the Giants last time out, uh, you know, was better against the Pirates, struggled against the Tigers both times against Detroit was not great. Uh, so Kirby really has not been dialed in. Uh, this whole month, you know, I don't think there's much you can do. Uh, you know, I guess you could maybe give him a, a skip a start, but do you trust Emerson Hancock to take that role? I don't know if I necessarily do. So I think at this point in the year, it's just something you have to hope he kind of gets out of. And he's just, you know, maybe a little fatigued here. I don't, do they have a day off on this road trip? I don't think they do. No, because it ends next Sunday in St. Louis. So you have three through Sunday here four Monday through Thursday. Yeah. You have no days off. So unfortunately, you know, unless you wanted to bring up Hancock or something for a start, which I just, I don't think you want to do that either. I think I'm just going to roll the dice that Kirby comes out of it a little bit. 
Um, you know, sometimes you got good players that just need their find find their way out of it. it doesn't have to be some, you know, in depth. Oh my gosh, what do we do here? Just Kirby's got to be better. Uh, you know, fortunate tonight the offense was good enough to you know, like I said, kind of bail them out. But yeah, very frustrating. Did settle in a little bit in the middle mid innings and get some outs. Did retire twelve in a row at one point, but even then wasn't missing a lot of bats. I don't know if Savant pulled up. I'm not sure how many swings and misses he got. It did not feel like a lot outside of the two strikeouts, which were both of Logan O'Hoppy. Um, you know, he did go into the sixth inning. The pitch count stayed low. You know, I, I mean, that's, he certainly didn't get rocked around enough where you had to destroy your bullpen tonight in the first game of a road trip. So, you know, I always try to give guys credit when they don't have their best stuff and they battle. Um, but I'd be more willing to give credit if Kirby had been lights out his last few starts. So a little concerning here uh, with George Kirby, you know, again, wins will sometimes mask just as losing, lo losing, loses, losing, <laughs> losses can mask good performances. Sometimes winning can mask some poor performances. Hopefully Kirby bounces back uh, in Oakland as next star. That Oakland offense is going to be easy. They've been swinging the bats pretty well since the all-star break. Uh, Chargua comes in, finishes off the six, but not before giving up the base hit to Drury, which was the fifth run charge to Kirby. Great seventh from Austin Voth. Um, interesting. Dan goes to Trent Thornton and Troy Taylor to finish off the game. We've seen this team in four run games, not hesitate going to their, better pitchers, you know, Snyder and Munoz. Uh, you know, I, I think in the first game of a road trip, I thought Dan actually did a good job here. You know, you'd love to avoid Snyder and Munoz here in game one, especially in a four-run four, four run lead. Now, listen, there's times beggars can't be choosers. You need to get the outs. You, you, you need the win. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, you're in a big losing streak. I'd say turn it over to the guys. Let them lock this one down. But I think first game of the road trip, going to Thornton and Taylor there makes sense. You've got Snyder and Munoz now for tomorrow if it's a closer game. Uh, the Angels have been frustrating for the Mariners this year, so I could have totally understood going to both of them. But I think it's the right call there. Uh, you know, you don't want to also manage games super nervous. And, and I, I wouldn't have minded going to Snyder and Munoz. I would have probably defended it and said, I get it. Um, but, but it works out right. And now you're in good shape with those guys. Good to go tomorrow. Like I said, you know, if, if you had a, if this was the last game of the road trip, you had a day off, I'd say, go to them, just lock down the W. But I think first game of the road trip, it's smart to stay away from, uh, Thornton. I thought threw the ball pretty well, shut out inning with the strikeout. Um, you know, I know he got a couple guys reach, but Moniac, um, he had struck out boy, Andy Fletcher strike zone was atrocious. I don't know if it necessarily favored one team or the other, just bad all the way around. Uh, but he had Moniak Kate end up reaching on, on a hard hit, but it was kind of an infield hit. Thornton's looked better his last few outings. I, I've said it in, uh, in my last post game that Thornton pitched in, that he's been uh, pitching better his last few outings. So hopefully, you know, again, all hands on deck, right? You're missing a lot of guys in that bullpen. So, and you're relying on a lot of guys like Voth and Snyder that haven't been in a lot of high leverage spots in their career. So I'm not saying they're going to fall off. They've been great, but anything you can get from somebody else stepping up would be really nice. So hopefully Thornton, you know, maybe on the path to having a nice finish to this season. Troy Taylor, really like him. Uh, shut out ninth inning with a strikeout. Wouldn't be shocked at all if Taylor starts getting a lot more high leverage spots here uh, down the stretch. But it'll sort of be nice if they can get Jimmy Garcia back here for the final stretch. Um, it'll definitely help that bullpen tremendously. This background is totally distracting me, by the way. Uh, let's move on to the offense. Nice game for the offense. Listen, anytime you put up nine runs, it's a good thing for the Mariners. They also put up um, nine hits and seven walks in this game. Uh, five run first inning, keyed by the Neto error. But I thought Polanco hit that ball pretty hard. So, you know, I know he doesn't get a hit for that, but it was still stung line drive. Uh, just happened to be dropped. But good contact. They went up 2 nothing. You know, Mitch Garver has the big double. Good to see uh, for Garver. Anything you can get for Mitch, who has a couple hits today, you'll take. Down the stretch, anything will be good and can help this team win. Robles, was it? Yeah, Robles added the base hit. So nice to see the Mariners jump out early and then continuing to add on. You know, I think we've seen a lot where they jump out early and then just kind of fade away. But they add two on the Julio home run in the fourth, Julio getting hot. Um, they had run in the seventh on Robles's little hit that Strickland, Hunter Strickland should have let that go. Um, I think it would have rolled foul, but you know, or at least why pick it up, right? Why risk it? Uh, there was no, nothing to gain there. So. They get kind of a cheap run on that. That was after a Garver bloop single. And then the run the eighth on the Turner sack fly. So nice the Mariners to add on. And they needed it, right? They, you know, they get up five nothing. The Angels score two in the first. You know, they go up seven to two. The Angels score two in the fifth, one in the sixth, clawing back into it. We've seen this Angels team do it to the Mariners in the past. Uh luckily for the Mariners, the Angels have traded away Esteves Garcia. So their uh their bullpen's not quite what it was um, you know, previously. 
and uh, Al Al Aldegiri, the starter for the Angels. I guess um, one of the first Italian-born um, players to start in Major League Baseball game. Really cool to see. Anytime I think you get that, you know, uh, something like that, it's it's a really historic performance. Did not think he looked very good, to be honest. Now he settled in. You know, honestly, from an Angels' perspective, he gave you five innings. Uh, that's key for the rest of the series to save the bullpen a little bit. Uh, honestly, it looked like, you know, had Julio done something in that first inning with that at-bat with the bases loaded, the second at-bat, I think he would have chased him in the first inning. So only gives up two earned runs. It can always, again, like I remember when I said, losing can mask good performances and winning can mask bad. So can like earn runs and non earn runs. Only two of the runs were earned because of the error by Neto, but he's still giving up all those hits after that. So I don't think he was quite as good as two earned runs in five innings, but a uh, really cool, you know, Italian American. I don't think he's Italian. I think it's just Italian uh, to make his major league debut. So that's really cool to see. Um, like I said, the Angels bullpen certainly not the same without Estevez. They still have Joyce out there, but not going to pitch when they're, when they're behind. Uh, let's look at the box score. J.P. Crawford 0 for 4. Did have a couple walks. Should have had three walks. I don't know what he was swinging at that at bat in the seventh, I believe. Um, maybe one of the worst swings I've ever seen from J.P. Also, one of the worst swings I think I've seen from a Mariners hitter this season. Don't really get J.P. in the leadoff spot right now. And I know they'd probably tell you track record. But honestly, even J.P.'s track record was great last year. But even before that was, you know, more of a, you know, eight, nine hitter. I, I get it. There's not a lot of guys performing in this lineup. I made a comment after last game that I like Victor Robles hitting ninth. I, I should clarify now. I did say like even in this lineup, but my point is more like, I think he's a great guy to have at the bottom in a lineup, ideally, because he gives you a little something at the bottom of the lineup and you're not having to go with like, you know, the Garvers or even, you know, Rojas has been scuffling. So it gives you a nice bat to turn over the lineup. But honestly, I think I'd flip Robles and JP right now. Um, until JP finds his stroke or, or just gets hot, I, I'd put him in the nine spot and I'd put Robles up top. I know JP does a good job working the count. Like I said, a couple walks today, good to see. Um, but until, you know, and that's great, right? You want your leadoff guy to get on base, but he's got to drive the ball a little bit too. And it just, you know, I, I, I think I'd move JP down. I'm not at, like, I've told you guys a hundred times on a big lineup construction guy. I don't think it's, I think it's a little bit overrated in terms of what actually, you know, the, the players have got to hit regardless of where they are, but I, I, I don't really get JP in the leadoff role right now coming back. Again, I also understand that lineup's not great either. Nice game from Julio, uh, but great game from Julio. Actually, one for two at the two-run home run. Also works three walks on base four times. Uh, Julio's become a walk machine since Edgar's taken over as hitting coach. So uh, maybe Julio's really taken some of Edgar's advice to heart. You, you know, I know people can be tired of hearing it, but man, a Julio, Julio hot streak that he is capable of doing. Um, we've seen Julio get on a streak where he can, it looks like he can't make it out. Uh, would go a long, long ways for this team if they want to make a run here. Nice game for Julio. Rough game for Cal, 0 for 5, just popped everything up. Um, him and Dylan Moore, the only starters that didn't have a hit today. A Rose Arena, 2 for 5. One of the hits was uh, off the pitcher. Um, I forgot which pitcher it was. It was let's get Miller. I think it was Miller that came in. Was that his name? Yeah, Ryan Miller. Um, but it was hit well, and then there was a solid base hit. So good to see a couple hits from Randy. Polanco was 0 for 3 with two walks, but again, stung that ball that got a couple runs in. Um, you know, so good to see there. Rivas pinch ran for him, came in for defense. Uh, Turner was one for three of the sack fly. I would love to see Turner start getting some extra base hits, but on base twice or no, no, actually not on base twice, the base hit and then the sack fly. So productive, productive, at least, uh, Dylan Moore was over two Rojas pinched. hit was over two nice game for the bottom of the order. Mitch Garver, two for five, uh, with the two run double. Um, and the, the blue base hit. Hey, listen, been a tough year for Mitch. He deserves to have a couple bloops fall in. Be clear on that. I'm not saying deserves it in the sense of like he's been bad, but it's nice sometimes when you're struggling to see those fall in for the guys. So listen, you know, overall the numbers have been decent against lefties for Garvards. Even that's tailed off though a little bit of late. If you can get something, right? Something in there for Mitch Garver would be nice to see. And Victor Robles, three for five. Um, after a you know, uh, the Lynn Sandy run for Robles, he dropped off and now he's been hitting the ball really well again, got the OPS back up to 745, hitting 278. So I know one of the hits was definitely uh, not stung very, you know, was the, the little dribbler, but also I thought stung a couple foul balls and that at bat in the first inning when he had the single, he ripped one down the line that I would have liked to seen the replay. It obviously no one thought about it. So it's clearly foul, but looked, looked closer um, on first take. So nice game for Robles. I I'd switch him and JP tomorrow. I, I think, you know, it gives you, listen, same thing applies, right? It gives you Robles at the top of the order and JP, you know, with his ability to work walks, can hopefully turn that lineup back over.
to Robles and to Julio. So listen, nice win for the Mariners, right? You start out the road trip. Well, really, really brutal road trip last time on the road. Um, Angels are not a good baseball team. You know, they, they've certainly given the Mariners fits, but it's nice to see them win one against them. Um, you know, and, and hopefully this is the start of a, a big road trip for the Mariners. You can't worry about I mean, you do need to worry about Houston. Obviously, you're trying to chase them. But the Mariners got to focus on the Mariners. And if they can find a way to keep winning games, let the chips fall where they may, right? I mean, there's nothing else you can do. You can't control other teams unless you're playing them. So even if you go that Houston series four games back, you know, you're still in spot, right? If you sweep it, you get it to a game and you'd have the tiebreaker. So, you know, it'd still be a possibility. You're going to have to beat the Astros in that series, try to keep it close and, and see what happens from there. there. There is still a decent amount of baseball left. Not a lot, not a lot, but still is time to keep winning. You know, good things, good things can certainly happen. It's just nice to see the team playing better ball regardless. So that's all I've got for tonight. I'll be back tomorrow night with the post-game recap. Um, so take care, everybody. Have a good night. Enjoy this one. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend, even though I'll see you tomorrow and Sunday before Labor Day itself. But enjoy your Friday night. And as always, go Mariners. Peace.